Greetings, this is Doc Ock coming to you live and direct today from... If you haven't caught us before, welcome to the show. This is Doc Ock at noon and nine coming to you with more Black Facts on the Tubular Black Facts channel. Today, we're going to be delving off into Ethiopia 101. So this is not a, a history presentation. But what we are going to present here is some information about Ethiopian culture and put it into a historical context so that you can better understand anything that you hear about Ethiopia. Now, before I get started, let me just go ahead, back up a little bit, rewind, and make sure that you all have done what I, what we need you to do. Number one, if you're watching on Facebook, give us a like. If you're watching on YouTube, give us the old thumbs up. And no matter what platform you're watching on or whether you're watching it live or recording, please, please, please do make sure to spread the word far and wide to all your friends, your family, your enemies, your frenemies, all of those people out there that you know, love, and even hate but come in contact with and let them know about Black Facts. Maybe one of those people that you really can't stand will listen to Black Facts and it'll turn their whole lives around, turn them all around. And then you could turn that enemy into a frenemy. Hopeful thought for today. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and read our um, proverb for today. Let me share with you the proverb for today. Okay. Here goes a good one here for these times. Sickness accompanies a waning moon. A new moon cures disease. Now, for those of you who are not aware about waxing and waning of the moon and all that kind of stuff, you know, a waning moon is a moon that is getting smaller every day. So it was full and then it goes down to a crescent and then it disappears and it becomes a new moon. And that new moon cures disease, but that new moon is also pure de black. In other words, it disappears into this blackness of space, and you can no longer see it. And that's the new moon. So they say, new moon cures disease. Sickness accompanies a waning moon. Interesting thought for today. And that proverb is brought to you from... Basuto land, Basuto, the land of the Basuto people. I believe that's in Southern Africa. I'd have to actually look it up because these names change from time to time and you got to keep up with the times, keep up with the times and all my rhymes. All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, Ethiopia. Well, we're going to be talking about Ethiopia all month. This is the uh, month of uh, Haile Selassie's be Earth Day, okay? His Be Earth Day happens during this month. And um, as a matter of fact, um, this is this will be celebrating the, I think, the 129th Be Earth Day of Selassie this year, if I'm not mistaken. It's the 129th year. Uh, if not, it's really close to that because he was born around 1895. Yeah, 1895. So um, uh, we'll be celebrating his birthday for the whole month, especially on his actual, the actual day. And during the uh, month, we will be featuring a variety of presentations on Ethiopia. Each week we'll have a different theme as we've been doing. And um, the um, this week will be focused on the Queen of Sheba. Next week will be focused on um, Abraham Anibal, Anibal. Week after that, Menelik, and then Selassie. So we got four weeks, four different individuals we're going to focus on, starting with the woman, the Queen of Sheba. 
otherwise known as Makara. Yeah, July 23rd, 1892. That was uh, the birth, the birth day of Haile Selassie, otherwise known as Ras Tafari. That's right, the original, the one and only original Ras Tafari. And we'll get into that on another occasion. All right, now, um, hmm. no, I shouldn't be doing all that. Okay, sometimes these computers want to do what they want to do. So at any rate, um, let's go ahead and check our slideshow for today to introduce you to the Queen of Sheba. Because we've got her on tap right here for your perusal. Boom. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the Queen of Sheba. Who is that? Oh, that's Pam Greer. Damn. She looking fly, 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 fly today. Mm, 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 mm. Pam Greer. Sheba, baby. Sheba, baby. Yes, and so this is actually the point. That in the movies, on TV, uh, on that big, big old silver screen, and now on all over YouTube and the internet, the Queen of Sheba has been portrayed in a number of different ways. Now, originally, the word Ethiop, Ethiop is a Greek word, and Ethiop means one thing. Black, period, dot. Without question, that's what the word means. Look it up for yourself. Don't take my word for it. The word Ethiop means black. And Here's just an image you can see of how the Egyptians portrayed these black people. When they said black, they meant black. They weren't playing around. That's actually what they meant. Now, this one I'm having some um, formatting problems with. I can see that right now. Let me see if I can um, fix these formatting issues here. Okay, here we go here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to just try and just set that up a little bit better so you can see the whole image. There you go. All right. And there we go now. Oops. Still off a little bit. We're going to get it right, though. All right. There we go. Now, so Ethiopia is a land of art, a land of artisans, a land of culture, thousands of years old. So we have many, uh, and, and, a, and a highly, excuse me, a very highly religious uh, society. Uh, we have uh, Jewish people uh, that are not converts. We have, um, we have um, Muslims. We have Christians. I don't know. And then, of course, we have those people who practice those ancient rituals and practices and rites that came before all of those more recent modern religions. So we've got it all in Ethiopia. You can you can go from one extreme all the way to the other in Ethiopia without a problem. Uh, but the whole country is very religious, period. And so we have a lot of icons, and our artwork represents these icons. So here you see the Queen of Sheba meeting um, King Solomon, and you can see that she's depicted much as he's depicted. There's not very much difference in the coloration, although you can tell they've depicted her as fairly light-skinned because you have contrast there with other individuals that are much darker. All right? Oh, wait a minute. Got to go back over here. Okay, now, somebody's have to click that button. I always wait for the arrows and stuff to disappear before I go on. Now, um, but of course, Hollywood had their own take on the Queen of Sheba. They had their own version of the Queen of Sheba. And here he is. Uh, here they are. Yul Brenner with hair and Gina Lola Brigida. Of all people, they picked an Italian to play the role of the Queen of Sheba. Now, you know, the Ethiopians and Italians will not even get together. Rasta don't eat no pasta. So why in the world would you depict an Italian 
as the Queen of Sheba. That's just <clears throat> that's just uh, anathema, the best word I can think of it. It just doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. But this is the case, and as you can see, this is an old movie, 1952 vintage. Um, Gina Lola Brigida, Yul Brenner with a full head of hair. That's his original hair and not pasted on. Here's another image from Ethiopia. And again, you see Solomon and Sheba. Take a closer look at Solomon depicted in this picture. You'll note that he's much darker. So it was there was no real difference that was considered, as far as the Ethiopians were considered, between the Hebrews or the Jewish people and the Ethiopian people. In other words, they were all part, we are all part and parcel of the very same people. Now, uh, in 19, no, no, two, the year, what was it, 19? No, it had to be the 19, was it 1990s? Oh, <clears throat> I've got it right over here. Where? Here we go, here. And um, I'll give you the exact year here. In the year, what year was it? 2004. 2004, I took a, um, I was driving down uh, Wilshire Boulevard in LA and I looked up and I saw a banner with um, um, advertising and exhibit that was going to be held at the Bowers Museum of Cultural Art in Orange County, California. And I was riding down the street and I saw it. And then uh, I went home and I called my friend, uh, Benaya, and I said, hey, man, I hear they're going to be having an exhibit on the Queen of Sheba down here in Orange County. And the very first thing he said was, I hope they're not going to, uh, 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 they're not going to present her as a white woman. And I was like, oh, come on, man. They wouldn't do that. Everybody knows the Queen of Sheba is from Ethiopia. How are they going to, how, how could they possibly depict her as a white woman? That just didn't make sense. And sure enough, this image you're looking at right here, uh, if you're on YouTube, this image I'm showing right here on YouTube is the image off the cover of the book. So you look closely at that, at the cover of this book, you don't see nan one Negro in the picture, not even one black person in the picture. And this is supposed to be the Queen of Sheba and her entourage, etc. But nothing, nothing. They all look like they came out of, I don't know, uh, England, maybe. Because there's more black folks than that now in England. But at any rate, here we go with a um, an, another iconic depiction of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And you you see uh, the Queen of Sheba there with the uh, with the lion on the floor next to her, and Solomon with the uh, seal of Solomon on his vestment. Some people call it the Star of David. We call it the Seal of Solomon, and it's actually one of the highest awards you can get um, from the country of Ethiopia is the Seal of Solomon. So we could go on like this all day with pictures of uh, black people in the background but the Queen of Sheba and Solomon depicted as white. Um, here's another uh, iconic Ethiopian image of the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. There are a number of movies that came out. Now, this exhibit I was telling you about at the Bowers Museum, it focused specifically on depictions of Solomon and Sheba in the movies. So, when you walked into this exhibit, all you saw were these pit, these posters of movie playbills, uh, theater playbills, all these advertisements about the Queen of Sheba in a play or a movie. And in every single instance, the Queen of Sheba played by a white woman. When this is more typical of an Ethiopian young lady, Ethiopian girl. This is typical. This is what a typical Ethiopian girl looks like. Now, of course, you know we we we're in, we come in all shades, but that that particular girl right there, she fit the bill. And of course, 
um, we always want to remember that Ethiopia is the land of the conquering lion. The conquering lion of the tribe of, of Judah. That is a, an official title, an honorific of the emperor of Ethiopia. All of the emperors, okay? Conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, emperor of the 3,000 year Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia. Okay? Uh, light of this world. Uh, there's a whole, there's a long title, and I don't remember the whole title, but the conquering lion part of the tribe of Judah, that part, very important thing to remember. So when you see these lines in that conquering line, you know we're talking about Ethiopia, not Jamaica. I know a lot of people think that relates to Jamaica, but it doesn't. All right, now we're gonna um we're gonna wrap this up right here because that seems like a good good place to wrap up at. The um and we'll continue on. We'll tell the story of the actual story of the Queen of Sheba in the days to come. And we will um, we will talk about the, um, the Queen of Sheba as portrayed in the Bible, the biblical Queen of Sheba. And, what it, and see, what does the Bible have to say about the Queen of Sheba? And in fact, what does the Bible have to say about Ethiopia, period? So we're going we're gonna to delve off into some things. And we've got a, definitely got a full week's worth of material to delve off into. Meanwhile, in the evenings, we'll be uh, focused, we'll be doing some special things for the children, which we've already started this weekend with um, presentations on the origin of coffee, which comes from Ethiopia, from the Kaffa region of Ethiopia. We've, uh, and we also dealt with Ethiopian houses, and we've got some uh, interesting materials that you can look at on our playlist. Go to our YouTube playlist, playlist for the month. We have two of them each month. And the playlists for this month are Ethiopia 101. And the second one is Tales of Ethiopia. So look under Tales of Ethiopia and you'll see these videos I'm talking about on the origin of coffee. Where does coffee come from? The original, the home of coffee, as well as um, videos about uh, Ethiopian houses etc. And we even take you on a tour of a real live traditional Ethiopian home. Beautiful home. Very beautiful home. Okay. Very beautiful home. You got to check that video. It's not a, you know, we try to put short videos up. We try not to, to have them up there, you know, for more than 10, 15 minutes or so. And then um, we'll be reading, we'll start reading this book tonight. The book is called Abraham Anabal. Okay, and the Raiders of the Sands, Abraham, Anibal, and the Raiders of the Sands. This book, um, I did get it online. You you will not find it in the bookstores in the U.S. It's not carried on the bookstores here. This is a a book that comes out of Europe. Excellent book. Matter of fact, it's a two parts. It's a, a two parter. But we're going to be reading from part one, all about Abraham Anibal, who was captured in the uh, Arab slave trade. And taken to Russia, and how he um, became one of Russia's most fabled heroes, Abraham Anibal of Ethiopia. Meanwhile, you know what you need to do. Number one, give us a like if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Last but not least, it's that time of the month, beginning of the month. We always ask for donations. Give what you can, give freely, plainly. We do need resources in order to continue our struggle because we're turning what we're doing here, our work that we started here that we thought would only go on for a few weeks, we're turning this into a vocation, not a staycation. We thought it was going to be a staycation, but it looks like it's going to turn into a vocation. Meanwhile, peace out without a doubt and justice because peace without justice, disgust us. We love being disgust, but we hate being disgusted. So don't disgust us. Give us some peace with some justice. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, or as Brother Farrakhan says, or else. <laughs> peace with justice or else. <laughs> All right, now, tonight, 9 o'clock, look for us. We'll be black. 